On behalf of the Eagle Ridge Academy Board of Directors, staff, and families, I'd like to welcome students, staff, and guests to our annual Veterans Day celebration. My name is Chris Babler, the Activities Director of Eagle Ridge Academy. As part of the Academy's vision statement, we meet today to foster an appreciation for the United States of America and our unique role in the world. We do this today together by honoring our military veterans and celebrating the sacrifice that service to country entails. Today we will celebrate with music and hear from our guest speaker, Lieutenant Colonel David Blomgren of the United States Air Force. Please stand and honor our nation's colors with the playing of the national anthem.
to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb. No, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor to be deprived of life, every or property, without due process of law. Or, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Amendment 6. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district, where in the crime shall have been, com been committed, which districts shall have been previously ascertained by the law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have a compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have an assistance of counsel for his defense. Amendment 7. In suits at common law, where the value of a controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by a jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. Amendment 8. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fine for cause, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Amendment 9. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage other retained by the people. Amendment 10. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectfully or to the people. Thank you. Good job, Josh and Veda. Now,
Now it is my honor to welcome to Eagle Ridge Academy Lieutenant Colonel David Blomgren. Lieutenant Colonel Blomgren, military lawyer, is the general counsel for the Minnesota National Guard. He received a direct commission as an Air Force judge advocate and entered active duty in 2008. He earned his, jur his Juris Doctorate from the University of Illinois. Lieutenant Colonel Blomgren has deployed three times in support of Operations Iraqi Freedom and Inherent Resolve. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Lieutenant Colonel David Blomgren. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Babler, for that nice introduction and to the band for their great rendition. I'm Lieutenant Colonel David Blomgren, and I'm excited to be here with you this morning to talk to you about veterans and our armed forces. I appreciate your school's emphasis on veterans, and I'm honored to be here with you. I wanted to give you a, I'll give you a little bit more background about myself in a few moments, but wanted to start off this morning by giving you a brief history on Veterans Day. Veterans Day isn't only about what service members are doing today, it is also about what has been done in the past. It is a day to remember the service men and women of years past and remember how they supported our great nation. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the Allies in Germany put an end to World War I. That conflict, referred to at a time as the War to End All Wars, prompted leaders to designate November 11th as a day to honor veterans of World War I. Years later, it became the day to honor all veterans. The first Veterans Day proclamation issued by President Eisenhower in 1954 called upon Americans to solemnly remember the sacrifices of all those who fought so valiantly on the seas and in the air and on foreign lands, to preserve our heritage of freedom and to let us commit ourselves to the task of promoting an enduring peace so that their efforts shall not have been made in vain. This day is observed on the other side of the world in France and has other names such as Armistice Day or Remembrance Day. While it once was a celebration specifically acknowledging the silencing of the cannons of World War I, it has now become a time to observe the heroism of those who have served, those who are currently serving, and those who have given their life in service to our country. It is not a celebration of victory, but rather a celebration of those who made victory possible. It's a day we keep in our, uh, in our thoughts the brave men and women of this young nation, generations of them, who, above all else, believed in and fought for a set of ideals. Though Minnesota is not home to an active duty installation, we have nearly 13,000 citizen soldiers and airmen in our Minnesota National Guard. Currently, we have nearly 1,500 guardmen and women deployed both here and abroad. Minnesota is also home to reserve and active duty members from all branches of service. The Army, Navy, Air Force, Space Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. My personal story of service has taken me all over the globe. When I was at law school at the University of Illinois, which if you weren't paying attention, had a great football game last week, I met a former Army Ranger. He told me about the role of lawyers in the armed forces. He promised me it would be a career of challenge and adventure, and I was hooked. And he was right. I was active duty for 11 years, which took me from Alabama to Colorado to Washington State to Germany to Washington, D.C., and then back to Washington State. I deployed three times to the Middle East and had very interesting jobs there, from prosecuting terrorists in Iraqi courtrooms to being the lawyer on the operations floor, giving the legal blessing to drop bombs on lawful targets. I often reminded myself that my law school buddies, while maybe making more money, were not having the unique experiences of flying Iraqi judges around in Blackhawks to get testimony, or traveling around Europe to brief military doctors on legal issues. If any of you want a unique 
challenge and rewarding career, I would strongly recommend that you consider joining the military. And I'd be happy to talk to you about how to do that. I came to Minnesota in 2018, and I'm now a full-time guardsman, where I act as the primary legal advisor to the Adjutant General of the Minnesota National Guard. The National Guard has been in the spotlight since I joined in 2018, from COVID response to flood fights and more. We have been busy. On June 6th of this year alone, more than 120,000 National Guard members across the U.S. were supporting overseas and homeland missions one of the highest levels of National Guard support to our nation since World War II. Unique to the National Guard is our ability to apply the training and equipment to, from our combat missions to aid our responses to man-made and natural disasters at home. National Guard members logged more than 11 million days serving our communities in 2020, more than four times as many as in 2019. And everyone here, today has been or know somebody who has been affected by the COVID-19 virus. Despite the inherent dangers, Guard men and women left their homes and served more than 7.6 million days in their communities, a mission that continues to this very day. Last year, we provided more than 632 million meals to neighbors, distributed more than 539 million pieces of PPE to essential workers and tested and screened more than 16 million people for the virus across the 50 states, three territories, and District of Columbia. As we reflect on Veterans Day, it's easy to generally think about an unnamed service member across Minnesota and the nation and our world. Today, I challenge you to think about a specific service member or veteran that you know. That person may be in your family or in your school or in your community. Have you taken time to recognize them and thank them? And I, if not, I encourage you to do so today. When speaking of veterans, President Barack Obama shared these words. Everybody can do something. Every American, every business, every profession, every school, every community, every state. All of us as one American team. That's how we will truly honor our veterans. That's how we will truly say thank you. That's how we will uphold the sacred trust with all who have served in our name. As we walk away from our time together this morning, I encourage you to reflect on how the actions of veterans have shaped the great nation that we live in today. I thank you for your time, for your attention, and for honoring veterans and their families today and every day. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Lumber. Thank you, audience members, for being attentive listeners. It's much appreciated. And a special thank you to the Eagle Ridge Academy Band and Orchestra, directed by Ms. Grace Conklin and Ms. Rachel Pinnis. They're going to close us out with one last piece before we dismiss.
got the band, the orchestra. We're going to dismiss in a moment. I do want to encourage uh, any future lawyers, because I know we've got a few in the crowd, uh, any, anyone interested in service or the Air, Air Force in particular, please come up to the stage and, and you can ask some questions um, prior to getting down to lunch. So thank you for your attendance today. Thank you for your attention. And thank you veterans for your service. Have a great Veterans Day.